So bandwidth gets tight. And the reason a lot of us become mom entrepreneurs is for more of that flexibility in our home and work life. But if we're sitting on Zoom calls and always in meetings, we kind of lose that flexibility, freedom piece that we're looking for. So like you said, it does allow us to multiply. It's the one to many. You can record something once and then get it out there. It can meet people where they might not be ready for that one-on-one with you yet. Maybe they need a little introductory working up to it. Maybe they're not ready to like 100% dive in. And this is where you can give them some type of intro or mini course. Mama! Let's reimagine mom life together. Mama Has Goals is your hub for relatable support and helpful resources that help you fuel yourself alongside motherhood. Your identity is bigger than mom. And whatever your goals are, together, we're making them a reality. I absolutely love sharing with women the opportunities for them to go after their goals. And that's truly what Mama Has Goals is built on, helping you find the resource for whatever is on your heart. And I always say, whether it's showering, having the best snack at school, or building your business empire, or moving up in your job, whatever your goals are, we want to help you get there. And having the option to create something that you share your expertise is super, super cool. Katie Casillas is going to be our pro resource in our Mama's Business Blueprint that focuses on course creation. She is going to help map out exactly how to create your course, help you get one started if that's what's on your heart and what you want to do, and even how we can help you get it up and running. She is the pro resource that you can meet with to see, is that something that you would want to do? Is there a place that that would make sense for you and how you would do it? Beyond that, Katie is a mom, educator, consultant, and digital marketing expert with over 12 years of experience in the online space. She is a self-proclaimed hype girl for mom business owners and loves working with entrepreneurs to help them create awesome social media content, launch digital products like courses and group programs, and find success in the online marketplace. Katie is such an amazing person and really can help you take what is in your brain or you're not even sure what you could package up and create it into something that runs when you're on the beach hanging out with your family instead. So dive in, listen to this conversation. So much cool opportunity for you, Mama. And I just want to always expand what is possible for you. And if it's not for you, that's okay. But it's fun to question maybe it could be. So this is one of those conversations. Dive on in. Katie, I'm so excited to chat. You've been such a fun person in my life through this business. And I love just talking to you about the options and the opportunities for courses and organizing your digital business strategy. And you're just a wealth of knowledge in the online business space. So I want to bring our listeners up to speed and just like why courses? Like how did you learn about courses and the opportunity to create courses and support other business owners in it? Yeah, it's a good story. Actually, it's, it's what the market asks for. And this is something that I teach my clients for is we build products around problems that people have and solutions that we can solve. So I've been in the social media and digital marketing world for over a decade. I worked at an agency, had my son, went off on my own and was working with a lot of clients on their social media management. And over time, really got into working with other female entrepreneurs in addition to social media What I found, especially the last three years, was that they wanted a way to connect with clients that wasn't one-on-one all the time, right? Like, how can I package up what I'm already doing and offer it in a different way? And courses kept coming up. And I decided to say yes to diving into what this could look like. I had offered a course for a group of women who were asking for help with social media. So it just kind of all came together. And after helping a couple entrepreneurs get courses launched and put these new offers out into the world, it became something that I love to do. I think exactly like what you said, it's such a good option for people when they're like, I've been working with people one-on-one or I'm feeling burnt out. I don't have enough bandwidth to continue in this way. And courses allow you to have this version of passiveness to your business. And like we were chatting before we clicked record, Nothing that I'm aware of is truly passive. Like there's always a part of it that you have to be involved in selling, promoting, something like that. But what I love about courses is it's this create it once and then continue to promote, continue to sell, but you don't have to be live all the time. And this is huge for moms because we know someone can get sick. Something can happen that throws your day off. 
And so you don't have to be clicking on the camera or meeting that client in person or meeting that client on a call. You can have this person learning and you sharing your knowledge, your expertise, your product without you having to be there in the moment. How have you seen this impact your life and also other people's lives having that flexibility? Yeah. So bandwidth gets tight. And the reason a lot of us become mom entrepreneurs is for more of that flexibility in our home and work life. But if we're sitting on Zoom calls and always in meetings, we kind of lose that flexibility, freedom piece that we're looking for. So like you said, it does allow us to multiply. It's the one to many. You can record something once and then get it out there. It can meet people where they might not be ready for that one-on-one with you yet. Maybe they need a little introductory working up to it. Maybe they're not ready to like 100% dive in. And this is where you can give them some type of intro or mini course. And I know we'll talk about the different offers that you can do later. So one, that flexibility and freedom, we can get a little bit of that back. I think in two, if your clients or the people that you're working with, your audience you're trying to reach is also a mom, think about it. We're consuming content and knowledge while we're multitasking. And so if we can create something where a busy mama can also be learning how to launch her business and listening to it almost as if it was a podcast or watching while she's doing the dishes, like it becomes more accessible. It allows us to fit into that student's life a little bit better too, versus again, that one-on-one, that appointment time on Zoom or in person. And I think that even the program that we're looking to run right now It's giving that option of layering it with something like the other thing that's really great about courses is you can do it with other things where if you want to pair it with a call, just like we are, or pair it with something else, you can have a live component or group component or community component, or it can be completely on someone's own self paced something they're doing at their own time and energy. So let's talk a little bit about that, like the different ways that you've seen people implement courses into their businesses, where it can be a low ticket mini course, a high ticket item, a group program. What are some of the options that you've seen do well that you love seeing implemented? So before I tell you what I think is doing really well right now, I'd say one of my biggest recommendations to anyone is to try running your program as some type of live or hybrid live group program first. Whenever we create something that's coming from our minds, we definitely want to get feedback from our target audience. We want to run some people through it, get some positive feedback, some recommendations, see if they get the transformation or the the change or the result they're looking for. So I'm a big proponent of running a beta, or if you don't want to call it a beta, just put it out there and get even a couple people in, in a group format and see how you like it. I've had some students and clients go, that was interesting. I got a lot of feedback, never doing group again, but It's kind of the beauty of showing up and let people feel into it instead of just creating it in a bubble and putting it out there and hoping it works. So that's one of the, I think, biggest shortcuts is doing it live at least once. If you hate that, you can always go take it and put it in a completely standalone model. And again, this we want to meet people where they're at. So really think Mm -hmm. about your student or the client that's coming to learn from you. How do they like to learn? How are they going to be consuming knowledge? What's going to make it easiest for them to go from A to B and get this done? So we want to think about how we want to show up, how our clients and students want to learn. And so this could be some type of group program. It could be completely DIY, go through it yourself. What I've been seeing working a lot is hybrid programs. So something where they can do maybe a majority of the learning on their own, but then there's also either a group community where they can get feedback from peers, or like you said, a one-on-one call with a facilitator. And this gives them like that extra level of touch, helps ensure that people are actually going through the curriculum. And then if I was going to layer one more thing on, it's our attention spans are just getting shorter. So I really do love mini programs, especially if you're just getting started to test the waters, because you can always layer on and add another new mini program, take people to the next level. Or we could talk about digital products too, but maybe there's some type of supporting digital product. And that way they're not buying into this huge master signature program that they have to do themselves. So that's what I've seen working. I definitely like people to try on different versions of how they deliver the content. Yeah, I love that. 
in this program that you get to be our pro resource of. And I'm so excited for people to jump on a call with you and get your expertise around courses. We ran live last year and it was such a good way to get feedback and knowledge and make sure that's exactly what we wanted to do and see where we could change things, make things better. I agree running something live can be helpful. And if that doesn't work with your lifestyle and your schedule because you have a bunch of little humans, then you can always make edits to your courses. That works so good. The other thing that I love about courses and one of the reasons I so advocate for mom starting businesses is it's a way for you to put your proprietary stamp on something, your own brand identity or your own framework. Let's talk a little bit about how courses allow you to really bottle up what's special about you and speak to that mom that maybe doesn't know what her like proprietary knowledge is yet or her framework that we all have something. And then secondary, what that looks like when you build it into a course. Yeah. So in the beginning, I always urge people to kind of dig deep. Like we're going to really look at our target audience, but we're also going to look at our offer suite, why we do what we do why we're bringing this to the market and, and where it fits. Because if we're going to be honest, there's so much content out there. If yeah. you wanted to go figure out how to do something, you could probably find it on the web and Google. But a person who's going to purchase a course or a program is looking for the answer plus someone that they trust, someone who maybe feels like them or they feel at least has the expertise to help them and guide them through so they get there a little bit easier, maybe a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to layer our personality, layer our own experience or like the experience of everyone that we've worked with into this so that the person, I feel like it gets people a little bit more extra committed. They feel like this is right for me. This is what I'm going to do. They're going to take the steps. And so finding like that special sauce that you could put in and this doesn't have to go as far as a lot of people are like, I don't have a signature framework. You probably have a way of doing things that's maybe slightly different from someone else. And if you're not sure what that is, maybe talk to some of your clients and ask them why they continue to work with you instead of going to work with someone else. What is it yeah. about you? Those could be weird conversations to have, but asking for and getting feedback can be the gold and, and what helps us figure out what it is we're doing here. And then again, put that in. And so this differentiating factor will help you once you go to market and to sell because you'll know how to speak to people and tell them what makes your program different. You got to pull it out of yourself, but layer it in there. Make it different from what they'll find on Google or YouTube. Make it an experience. And then also something that they want to talk about and tell other people about. So good. Now, for that woman that's like, yeah, okay, this sounds like something I might want to do or I have an idea maybe but they're just not sure how much effort it would take or they don't know how they would really push it through. Talk about what the actual process looks like for creating a course in the sense of how long do they need to commit to getting something live? And of course, it depends. Is it going to be a mini course? Is it going to be bigger? What type of content is going to be part of it? But maybe a sliding scale of how someone could say, okay, how quickly could I get this up and running? What would it take? I would say spend a day, set some time aside, like an hour or two to really brain dump everything. Look at what you've got. Give yourself a score from one to 10, how not even tech savvy you are, because there's totally a way you could launch just with videos on YouTube or Google Drive. But yeah. how tech savvy are you? Where else, where are you going to need support on the execution? But really, you already have the knowledge in your head. We have to remember we we're teaching somebody from something we already know. We don't have to go learn it. We're going to take what we already know and share it with someone else. So brain dump, create an outline, and then we're going to edit that down. Okay, now we've already got our framework for our course, right? We've brain dumped and, and outlined it. To be honest, you could film all of your content in a day if you wanted to and get it out there. I would say realistically, if we're going to get feedback from some people, and then of course we want to build in our marketing and launch plan and all that, but just building it aside you could get it done in a weekend. What's that law where it's, it's like, if you give yourself a weekend, you'll get it done in a weekend. If you give yourself six months, this is true when it comes to courses. And I feel like the biggest hang up is people doubt themselves and they doubt what they know. Cause this is about us bringing our knowledge to the table. I guess what I want to say is done is better than perfect, especially for your first one. Like you said, you could always re-record modules. I'm a big fan of ripping the bandaid and just trying it. And again, like I love doing the group course or the group program way, because you can have an outline of all the topics you want to talk about. Do a weekly, maybe it's five weeks, and prepare 
each week as you go along, get feedback and say, okay, I'm going to tweak that a little bit for next week. Record the sessions and then you can go back and edit. So really you could get this done pretty quickly. So I say a weekend, depending on how much is in there, a couple months. But if you give yourself more than that, it's going to take, it's going to take that long, right? We know this. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And busy moms, it's the same saying too of give it to the busiest person because they only have like so much time to get it done. And that's exactly it. Give yourself more time. It's going to take that long. Give yourself less time. You'll figure out how to get it done. But of course, there's a couple boxes you have to check. But overall, you can get a lot done. So I absolutely love that. For the woman listening that isn't convinced yet that she knows something, the analogy that I heard that I absolutely loved when I got started is it doesn't mean that you necessarily are the best person to answer this, but you've experienced something that you could help someone go through better because you've done it. And if you think back to when you got started in whatever that is that you overcame, it could be a personal challenge, it could be a professional challenge, whatever it is, and you see, okay, there's this hole that I had to go through and I could help someone else build a bridge so that they didn't have to do that, that's what you can offer, right? And so if there's anything that you looking back could do better because you're now connecting the dots better, that's something you can do. There's people usually in two buckets, I think you'll agree, where they're like, I know exactly what I want to teach. I know what I want to create a course around. I know what I want to do. And the other person that's like, I just don't know what I have to offer. And it's thinking back to what is the thing that you could teach someone else to do better, faster, quicker, stronger, whatever that is. Would you agree? And how would you speak to that person that's feeling like they don't have anything to offer? So with courses, again, we're not taking people from A to Z. We're getting from A to B, maybe A to C. And then we can layer on the next step later with additional offers, Put move them into a mastermind, move them into working one-on-one with you. You have the ability to put them in that bucket, but really what a program needs to have is a start and a finish. You get them, like you said, across that bridge with a little help. Yeah faster than they would have done it or a little bit better or more supported than they would have done it on their own. That's what we need to focus on and do. And more than that could be overwhelming. So really, yeah. you definitely have gone from A to B somewhere in your life or in your business where you can help someone do the same. Oh my gosh. Katie, thank you so much. I'm so excited for the women that choose to be a part of this program and can get on a call with you and you can help just really see the, their opportunity in a course or if they already have a framework that they're looking forward to building that you can really help them strategize that. And then you can support them even after this program into all the other ways that you work with people. Is there anything else you want to leave with these women? Any other tidbits or things that you've experienced in your own entrepreneurial journey that you would love to share? This is what I see a lot, Kelsey, is we all have this idea maybe for course or we feel that like, I would really love to do some of that one to many but I don't know. Am I a teacher? Because we feel like we have to step into that role again, that A to B. Just try it. Just see, because we get into business for a couple of reasons, right? We support our family, but also, especially as moms, we want to make an impact in what we're doing. And so mm-hmm. if you can start to impact more people because you've taken up what you know and put it in a way that's consumable and you can reach more people, then you're making a larger impact. And sometimes we have to take ourselves out of it and remember that's what we're showing up and that's what we're doing this for. Oh, I love that so much. Katie, thank you so much for your time today. I can't wait for you to be in this program and helping all these women. Thank you. It's going to be wonderful. Thank you. I am asked all the time, Kelsey, how do you pursue a business alongside family? And how do you make it profitable? And how do you balance it all? And I stand behind this framework that I've created, which is the three piece to profit. And that is your personal, your professional, and your people. How do you balance the three of those and create the success and the fulfillment and the profit, if you will, in each bucket in each category? I'm super excited to bring you a free workshop where I'm going to be breaking this all down. So go ahead to the show notes where you can sign up for the three piece to profit workshop, which is going to be on September 26th, where I'm going to break down how I believe you can create a sustainable business that brings you balance, fulfillment, and joy without sacrificing family and create the success that you really can have in both categories. So if that's something you're interested in, head over to the show notes and check it out.